Our school is located midway between the country club and out in the country. So our kids are a delightful blend of camouflage and bow ties. The driving questions are the result of several tragedies our school family has faced in recent years. So needless to say, we're eager to answer them. Our first week, we spent lots of time on our laptops, doing research, talking about the meaning of morale and why ours could use a boost. and having a little fun with Kahoot. We looked at lots of different mural styles, paying close attention to the color choices and subject matter. Some we liked, some not so much. But then there were others that were so fun and whimsical, the ones that made you smile with every glance. We knew that was the direction we wanted to go. There's no escaping color, it's everywhere. Blue is the color of the sky and the ocean. Peaceful, tranquil blue causes the body to produce calming chemicals. Green symbolizes nature. It is the easiest color on the eye and can improve vision. It is a calming, refreshing color. Cheerful, sunny yellow is an attention getter. While it's considered an optimistic color, people lose their tempers more often in yellow rooms. It's the most difficult color for the eye to take in so it can be overpowering, if overused. We hosted our school's counselor, gaining a new understanding and empathy for those around us. We had some open, honest discussions about tough things we've all dealt with, how we got through those times, and what to do if we find ourselves there again. We laughed, we cried, but most importantly, we grew as human beings. Once we decided on a subject, the sketching began. And our very own buck was born. Approved by administration and now has a new home. Well, when he's done. Week two brought lots of manual labor. That entire canvas had to be primed. For me, it brought a crash course in multiplying and dividing. Once refreshed on the steps needed to turn our 16 by 22 inch drawing into a 72 by 99 inch painting, I was able to share that wealth of mathematical knowledge with my kids and we prepared the grid. The first one was drawn on plexiglass and laid on top of the artwork. Viewfinders were made in order to localize one square at a time and simplify what would otherwise be an overwhelming task. Then, using a fun new tool, we snapped a chalk line on the large canvas, creating a grid with the exact number of squares as the smaller plexi version. With close observation, students were able to recreate the lines 
from the small grid to the large one, one square at a time. Week three brought lots and lots of color. What looked like totally random swipes of paint were actually thoughtful strokes placed in specific areas for accent or emphasis. Pushing them as hard as I could without hampering their creative spirit, this crew worked tirelessly during class as well as after school. And that dedication paid off. Now, they will forever be remembered at L.E. Gable Middle School. The artist who created that ginormous, colorful, happy-go-lucky t-shirt wearing deer that still brings a smile to every face who sees it. Although we didn't quite get to it within the allotted time, we are still continuing with the engineering aspect of our project as we learn to build wooden bracing, stretch, then hang our canvas.